Hey everyone, welcome to Legally TT. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. If you're returning, welcome back. So today, we're gonna talk about making a sewing machine wig. It's gonna be using three bundles of 14 inch water wave and one 13 by four frontal, also a 14 inch water wave. So, in this first video, you're just gonna see me prepping my cap and getting ready to sew down my frontal. So, if you wanna get started sewing your own sewing machine wig, stay tuned and make sure you like and subscribe and also turn on that good old notification bell so you know when each video is ready for you to view. So let's get started with what you'll need before you get started to make your wig on the sewing machine. First, let me show you guys the hair. This is hair for my collection. This is a water wave texture. So it is gonna be pretty. A nice summer wig, nice wet and wavy, or nice just loose. It is a 14 inch, all of my bundles, I have three bundles of 14 inch and a frontal that is also 14 inch. It's really me replacing the last wig that I showed you guys that I told you that I didn't do too well with sewing it. Yeah, you know, you live and you learn. So these are my bundles. Doo -doo. So beautiful, beautiful hair. And I have a frontal as well. I will be customizing this frontal and I'll go through it with you guys. I'm actually testing out some new methods as well that I will be testing for the first time along with you guys. So I do have the stretch mesh dome cap. This is the packaging. And I'll get into in a minute why I chose the extra large. So it is the mesh dome style wig cap. It is the, I went back to the black cap, um, mainly because I felt like it blended more with the wig and more with the hair. The brown cap was a good idea, I thought. It would look more like skin tone, um, but I think because it's such a different tone than my skin tone, it didn't work out the way I thought it would in my head. Such is life. So we went back to the black caps. So I'll show you guys what the cap looks like, not on the mannequin. So it is breathable. That's why I went to these caps over the spandex caps. It is really, really stretchy. And we'll go give you some information about that too. Some things I figured out on my own. So ignore my color. She's colorful, yes. My color on these mannequins. I also have a 22 inch mannequin. I am about a 21 and a half inch head to 22. I'm also growing my hair back out um so once my hair is fully grown out i'm going to need that half an inch just to encompass my extra hair so <clears throat> as you can look on the cap on the front what i consider the front it's open it doesn't have this v as you can see here so i put this side on the back of the mannequin so you know the back of the mannequin also because it has the hump in the back. So just like our heads, not quite, but you know, you get the gist. It's flat on the front and it has the hump in the back. So this is where I put the little V that goes down. And you can also tell where the middle of your mannequin is because it is sewn in the middle. So I try and match it up there. Now, this is for me, so my measurements front to back, so that would be front to back is for, is actually 13 inches. My circumference, like I said, is 21 and a half, but I use a 22 because I have not found a 21 and a half, and I prefer to have that extra half an inch for hair and for give, or you know, if I mess up and the cap shrinks a little bit, I'm still able to fit my wig. So, 
I take it and try and get it as close to the middle as possible. As you can see, I also have my tape measure here. I typically will huh, it's stuck on the wrong end. Take my tape measure and it's always stuck to this mannequin because this is the one I always use. And because it has this little metal pin at the end, I actually make sure I bring the mannequin head or the cap down to the one inch and start at the one inch. So I will put it at the one inch back here. And since my front to back, oh, I'm not quite there. Let me do it this way. Put it on the one inch and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Get a little closer. So there it is, it starts at the one inch. So since my front to back is 13 inches, we will measure and I'll go over some tricks I'm gonna use. From front to back, this cap, since it is the extra large cap, um, goes to round about 16. It's easy to kind of stretch it to 16. I don't want it quite at 16, but I don't want it at 13 even either. What I have found with these caps is if you think about it, because when you take it off, it is no longer stretched. So when you go to sew on the sewing machine, you're sewing on it without it being stretched. So you get different measurements after you're done sewing your wig. So I decided to go with a larger cap, bring the cap up to about 14 or 15. I, I'll figure it out when I bring the cap up. I'll make that decision right here with you guys. Um, and then I'm going to sew it to keep it that size and I'm going to leave it a slightly larger size. That way the cap is less stretched when I take it off of the mannequin head and that way it won't kind of shrink up once it's off the mannequin head and the measurements will stay a whole lot better than if I use the regular size dome cap which actually fits me perfect. Um, however, of course when you take it off it is no longer stretched to that side and every video that I watch says you shouldn't stretch your cap while you're sewing. So of course I didn't stretch my cap while I was sewing and that's why you've seen I had the gaps on this side, not on this wig. This is actually a lace front pre-made wig. I didn't make this one. I actually purchased this one. I'm testing this one out, did the color myself and I'm loving it. Um, and so that's not this wig. So that's why I had a really bad fitment for the previous wig. Actually a couple of them that I did with those caps. So I'm deciding to try this method out and we'll go through this together and we'll see how this fits. I actually started a wig um, just with some test hair that is not from my current vendor and is a 360 frontal because I've never done a 360 frontal. I wanted to kind of test it out. I actually had that hair in my stock for quite some time. So I figured, hey, why not? Let's test on that as well. So we can test on the 360 frontal and using the larger cap to see how it fits. I've already sewn down the frontal and so far it actually feels like it's going to fit exactly the way I need it to fit. Um, I did not shrink that cap at all, but the reason I didn't is because that's a 360 frontal. So I didn't pull any material on that cap like I'm going to do here for you guys now. So I'm just going to pull up just the front because I don't want to have to pull it too much and have a lot of extra material to sew down. I'm just going to pull to about 14 and a half. So as you can see, when I remeasure, 
we are 14 and a half front to back. My measurements are 13. I like to be able to have some wiggle room just in case the cap shrinks a little bit while I'm sewing or, you know, if I just mess up. So let me straighten it out a little bit. And then I'm going to show you guys how I sew down this extra material. What I also like to do, because I have also messed up misplacing the cap on the mannequin head. And I guess I stretched it down really far in the back. So for the nape, I had stretched it down pretty far and pinned it. But once I sewed the wig, it was so ill-fitting. But you can't tell because there's a lot of hair on this wig. And I'll show you guys that wig. And it's still gorgeous and I still wear it. Um, so I also double check my circumference just to make sure I haven't stretched it to a different circumference or settled it and at a different circumference. And it is at 22, a little over 22 actually. So we will, it actually kind of falls at 23. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it up back here and pull this, remeasure. I like to measure from the one inch and it should show up as 14 because we're going to minus an inch, of course. But I want to make sure it still pulls good to the front. So, like I said, I don't mind it being a little larger because I do put an elastic band in my caps. So they typically fit amazing once I put an elastic band. I also use a one and a half inch wide elastic band so it sits really nicely and it's very snug and it doesn't move or irritate me because it doesn't actually cut into my skin. So we have that folded up. So let me lower this down a little bit so it's easier to see. I am not that tall to be able to see over this mannequin. There we go. That's easier. So I did pre-thread some needles. So we are going to just sew this up really quick. If you want to sew it on the sewing machine, you can. But I like to do everything that I'm going to do on the mannequin first and then go to the sewing machine. So I like to make sure that it's really flat. So I just fold it over really flat and I am going to sew this down. I do a really simple stitch because it is not going to be seen and there's going to be a weft that's going to go over it and in the middle of this, this will actually probably be cut actually because it's a frontal. So I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time trying to make this pretty or worry about it being, um, you know, really small or anything like that because this is a frontal wig. So all of this is more than likely going to be under the frontal. So just a simple. My stitch is pretty large for this because like I said, it, I don't need to make it super duper pretty or anything like that. I'll show you guys. I just want to make sure it keeps the, the cap in place while I sew. Now the thread that I use, this is polyester sewing thread. Um, I have a big, really big spool of it. Um, it did not cooperate well with 
the sewing machine it kept binding up on me um, so I did find some different thread to use for the sewing machine I use nylon thread in the sewing machine and I'll show you guys that as well when we get to the sewing machine If you have any questions about this part, please make sure you drop it in the comments below. And I will be sure to answer your question. If I feel like it warrants a video, I will gladly make a video on it if I get a lot of questions about the same thing. So I'm all the way over. I'm going to go ahead and knot this out. And I'm just going to wrap my thread around three times and pull it through, making my cap smaller. And just to check, I always, I double and triple check myself just to make sure I don't mess up on things yes it may take me a little longer because i do so but better safe than sorry so we're good let me grab my scissors oh, I and just cut the extra thread off Cut a little longer because what I'm going to do, I typically knot it. Tie it at the end to make sure that knot stays. i do that twice. Just my personal preference. Even though I'm going to cut it off, I just, I don't want things to move. So that's that, that's sewed down. The next part is to put the frontal on. So I typically use closures, but because this is a summer wig, I wanted to use a frontal and I could pull the hair off my face. Um, you know, just have a little more flexibility. Hopefully I can still lay this to where it's still going to be glueless because I don't like putting anything on my skin that I don't have to and I like to be able to just take it off whenever I get in the house and not go through a process of taking it off. I don't use lace glue. Um, I use different sprays. I have a couple different ones that depends on which one I get my hand on that day which one I'm using. Um, so I'll definitely make a video on how I apply my wigs as well when I do kind of tack them down when I know I need them to stay put and not move at all. So I'm gonna lay this frontal down on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull, make sure, what I like to do is make sure I get them in the middle first. So I fold it in half. I can't remember who I seen fold these in half and make to make sure they were in the middle. But I'm sure somebody will find it or put it in the bottom. So I fold it in half and I'll make a little mark on it with my marker. Uh oh, I don't think I'm going to see it with that one. Yes, the dog is in the room with her squeaky ball. So I'll make a little mark. I'll be able to see it. Nadia. So, I can see my little mark that I made for the middle. No, oh, I don't know. Nope. I made it harder to see. You guys can actually see it better this way. So, my little mark for the middle. 
Um, so line that up in the middle. Oh, I got the hair. It's okay. It'll come off. Actually, I'm dyeing this wig. Who knows what color yet? We'll figure that out. I bring it down just a smidge, probably about fingers width from where the knots start to where, you know, I, the cap should start. That's just my preference of where I bring it. You want to make sure the back is laid flat. I'm not worried about the front laying flush. Let me look at it. Make sure everything's brung down and in the middle where I need it to be. So there's little tabs where the frontal ends and that's what I line up with the end of the cap. So we're just going to pin that down. If you hear noises, both of the girls are in here right now. I apologize in advance. Got that down. I'm going to get this side down. Feel for the little where it ends. And align that with the cap. Yep. I'm going to make sure it is flat all the way around. So you can either braid this hair out of the way, which is what we are going to do. Or just some little loose braids to get it out of the way. I don't care what they look like right now. I'll redo them before I um, start on the sewing machine so they'd be a little neater and make sure they stay out of the way because these will probably come up. Come loose because they're just loose braids so I can see and make sure that everything is laying flat. break this side because I need to pin this back side down as well and make sure it's out of my way. I also don't want it tight because I don't want to pull a lace any which way that it's not supposed to go. I want it to still lay naturally. Um, so that's another reason why. See, I haven't pinned the back so that's fine. Um, that's why I don't braid it tight either. Because I just don't want to pull a buckle or anything into the lace. So, really loose braid for now. Alright, so that's that. Make sure my lace is still laying where I need it to be. Middle is still in the middle. There we go. I'm going to pin this part down as well just so I know middle stays in the middle like finger length width it's just my preference look on this side even this corner is a finger width and make sure that why see we can adjust this corner to make it another finger width it's a little loose back here so i'm going to as you go, I'll show you guys what it looks like back here. Pretty loose back here. I want it to be taut and flat, really buckly right there before I hand sew this down. So I'm just going to grab this pin and move it. Now, as you can see, it's a lot flatter. Once I sew it, it'll sew flat as well. I don't sew, you know, straight across. I actually am going to sew from one side and then sew from another side. It's a little easier for me to sew if I tilt it to the side a little bit. And as you can see, it's nice and flush. I'm actually going to pin it. And also, that's what, as you can see, this is where that, where That fold starts to go away. 
And you can't see any of the fold up here. So all of that fold is gonna end up cut out. So we're all done prepping our cap. We've made the necessary adjustments to make sure when we're done sewing this wig, it'll fit perfect on your head. Also, we've pinned down our frontal, so now we're just ready to get to sewing. So, if you want to see the next video with sewing down your frontal, make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and turn on that good old notification bell so you get the notifications when the next video is posted. Thanks for stopping by.